So there's a lot of interest these days in the future of work, and there are pessimists and there are optimists, there are people looking at one side of the problem, another side of the problem. I think the contribution that I could make to that debate is to look not just at the demand for labor, but also the supply of labor that's heavily influenced by demographics. When you dig into the demographic forces, you see quite a change in perspective from what we're seeing in the standard uh, press these days. During our lifetimes, we ta saw two big shocks to the labor market. One was entry of women to the labor market in a much larger degree, and the other was the baby boomers. And so for most of our lives, we've seen fairly loose labor markets. It's always been possible to find workers, but this is now in the process of changing dramatically because the baby boomers are retiring and women's position in the labor market is pretty much leveled off. And so the next 30 years are going to be very different than the last 30 years. Right now, the labor force is growing at half the rate of the population. And in the very new future, the labor force would actually be declining if it weren't for legal uh, immigration in the U.S. And we're in a very good position compared to most countries. If you look at Japan, China, Taiwan, Korea, Germany, Italy, Spain, etc., they're really facing a demographic uh, crisis in the next uh, couple decades. We've seen tremendous advances in artificial intelligence, image recognition, voice recognition, uh, machine translation, just over the last five years. However, I will say that the progress in robotics has been much slower because robotics is an inherently more difficult task, especially if you have a uh, non-controlled environment. If you have a nice controlled environment like an assembly line or a flat lawn or some uh, very uh, field for a farmer, then it's uh, possible to utilize robotics, but uh, the real world complex situations make it much more difficult. Every day on YouTube, there are 500 million views of how-to videos. Everything from how to make a souffle, to how to paint watercolor, to how to weld, to how to solve a quadratic equation. Whatever you need, there's an instructional material there. And this is unprecedented in human history because we have this huge wealth of educational and training material available for free anytime to anybody on a very simple and user-friendly device. So I think that's going to have big implications for the future. The raw materials for teaching and learning are widely available to everyone. And the challenge is, how can we build an infrastructure around that that deals with the credentialing and the testing and the mastery of these skills uh, as a way to help people get jobs and do useful roles in society? Several years ago, I coined this term, computer-mediated transactions. And what I mean by that is in many, many transactions now, there's a computer in the middle. So what can that computer do? The simplest and most obvious thing is it can capture data about the transaction, and you can analyze that data and use it to improve the functioning of the transaction. Used to be that was expensive, but now it's become dirt cheap and just a direct byproduct of the transaction itself. Well, obviously, this raises the issue of security, and security is a critically important issue. The technology is there to do it. The techniques are there to do it. It's just a question of getting the discipline into the management practices. Thank you.